Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I am admitting people uh, to this class. Hi. So nice to see your faces. All right, so we're going to begin with some key breathing, please. So if you just sit where you are and be comfortable, close your eyes. We'll breathe out.
So thank you everybody for joining us. For some of you, it's six o'clock in the evening. For some of you, it's five o'clock in the morning. And for I think a couple of others of you, it's the middle of the night. So um, I appreciate your attentiveness. If you haven't done this before with us, this is something that we uh, do regularly on Maui at Maui Ki Aikido, it's at the Shinshinkan Dojo, and that is that we, we uh, Sayaka Wiesner and I retranslate uh, some of Koichi Toi Sensei's teachings. Um, and this is because for one thing, they were translated many, many, many years ago, way back in the beginning, some 50, 60 years ago, just, just after Tohei Sensei first wrote them. Uh, they were translated into English by, who knows, someone in the West. But Aikido was just in its infancy in the West, and not much more than that in Japan. So that Translations seem uh, tend to be uh, very uh, mm, uh, shallow, sometimes pointing just to the physical, and often not uh, as 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 uh, in, in inclusive as we find the original writings of of Kuichitoi Sensei to be. So. Uh, I always start the sessions by, <coughs> excuse me, reading you the first translation that we've used for the last, as I say, 50 or 60 years. Uh, and these are the, this is uh, the, the original translation of the five principles of key breathing. Now, of course, Toy Sensei did 20 sets of five principles. And we've already covered five or six of them. And so at this point, we're working our way through. And right now we're at the five principles of key breathing. The original translation, the first principle says, exhale gradually with purpose and control. The second principle says, exhale with a distinct but barely audible sound. The third says at the end of the breath, Key continues infinitely like a fading note. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number four, inhale from the tip of the nose until the body is saturated with breath. And number five, after inhaling, calm the mind infinitely at the one point. So that's very good, but it's not exactly what Tohei Sensei wrote. Uh, and I will now read you the five principles of key breathing as translated from his original words. Number one, exhale gradually with ease. If you recall, the, 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 the other one said with purpose and control. Someone added that. Toy Sensei said with ease. Number two, exhale with the smallest sound possible. Not much change. Number three, exhale gradually from head to toe. Number four, inhale through the tip of the nose and fill the body from toe to head. And number five, after inhaling, calm yourself at the one point in the lower abdomen. Um, the only thing that really strikes me as different between these two translations is, is, this, is this, this new one is much more simple. And I think that's a really important key to uh, to keep breathing. Uh, we tend to, as we do with many things in our lives, make key breathing uh, a difficult task. And I think it, it, uh, it, 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 it does two things. It, it discourages us uh, from getting up in the morning and practicing key breathing, which is what both Toy Sensei and my teacher Suzuki Sensei and now me have encouraged everyone to do. But it also um, prevents us from really enjoying 
uh, this, you know, it reminds me, Susan B. Sensei, uh, his famous phrase was, breathe, 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 fellas. Whenever he was teaching a seminar, he would always tell us, breathe, breathe, breathe. Uh, but, you know, when he says that, he's saying, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. He's not saying, do, do, do. He's not asking us to, to take on this, this heavy burden of getting up every morning or before we go to bed every night, uh, breathing for a half an hour or an hour. You know, when, when I um, used to Otomo for Shinichi Suzuki Sensei, we often traveled to South America or Europe or the United States or Japan. And in those days, um, we stayed in the same hotel room together. Um, there wasn't finances to, to allow anything else. And so uh, he would get up early, of course. I could never manage somehow to get up earlier than he did. And he would sit with his back to me on his bed over there. And then I, that's when I knew it was time to start doing our breathing. So we would begin breathing together. And uh, after one hour, he would stand up and stretch like this. And then he would either say, okay, Chris, time for breakfast. Or he would sit back down and we'd breathe another hour. He never did it in, 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 in smaller allotments than that. We would breathe another hour. Generally, it was not more than two hours. But on occasion, it was three hours. And on some special occasions, it was four hours. And I, I'm only telling you this because that's how I learned to enjoy it. If you're doing key breathing with your teacher and he makes you sit there for four hours and breathe with him, and you don't like key breathing or it's difficult for you to do because you're, you're trying to do something yourself and you're struggling and, and not following these principles, and then you will not be able to do it. And, and I, I speak from experience because I had a difficult time, but I learned. And, and after all this time, I think now, as I think back that Suzuki Sensei was really teaching me that very thing just to learn to enjoy the breathing. So Toy Sensei says, um, the, the ultimate happiness, uh, I think it's translated in the um, Shokshu, the original Shokshu is the supreme ecstasy, uh, but the words are actually the, the, the ultimate happiness. Um, why do we do breathing? Well, breathing is, you know, it's without, I mean, you can, we could pick water, drinking water, we could pick eating, we could pick a number of other survival things, but we can go without them for a while. Breathing, you can only go for two, three, four, or five minutes, maybe, and you die. So the most important thing is breathing. Plus, our breath is connected to our state of mind. When our breath is deep, and calm, we are deep and calm. Access for us to the deepest, calmest realms are available. Somebody is trying to get in. Are available to us when we are, when we are in this state of mind. I would like to say something about each of these. Uh, well, that's what I was talking about. Exhale gradually with ease means let it be easy and enjoy it. Um, exhale with the smallest so sound possible. Now, I don't know about you, but I think many of you learned to breathe like I did many years ago. Maybe not as many as me, but a lot of years ago. And originally when Toy Sensei and Shinsu Sensei maybe other teachers taught breathing. They taught that you make a noise like this when you breathe out. Right? You, you all know this. But Toy Sensei 
60 years ago when this was written, said, exhale with the smallest sound possible. So it was known. But somehow it didn't get translated out to all the dojos, to all the key societies in the world. So we struggled for years, uh, feeling we had to make a nice loud full sound uh, to be doing key breathing correctly. Okay, so that's uh, number two, exhale with the smallest sound possible. When I'm doing key breathing, I don't think you can hear it. I can hear something, but just barely. It is with the smallest sound possible. And at the same time, that means you're doing it with the least force as possible, the most relaxation as possible, the most calmness as possible. Inhale gradually from head to toe. These last three instructions, um, well, at least the, those, the next two instructions are exhaling and exhale, exhaling and inhaling, basically from the position of whole body breathing. So that's the first level of breathing, whole body breathing. We breathe in from the universe, we breathe the breath in and fill our body from the tips of our toes to the top of our head. And when we breathe out, we breathe out from the top of our head to the tips of our toes, emptying our body. That's called whole body breathing. Toy Sensei called this whole body breathing. And there's another level to breathing. The next level uh, is called universal breathing. And when we do universal breathing, it's just like uh, ki no ishiho or ki, breathe, uh, ki meditation. So that when we breathe out, we breathe out to the ends of the universe and to all of humanity. This is kakudayo. And when we breathe in, we take in all of the universe, all of humanity into our infinitely small one point. This is called universal breathing. And number five says, after inhaling, calm yourself at the one point in the lower abdomen which to me applies directly to universal breathing. Um, before I finish this, there, there, there is one more level of breathing that, that Toy Sensei spoke about. And that's uh, Mu Soku, he called it, Mu Soku. Mu means uh, empty or nothing, no. Uh, and so cool is breath, so no breath. But of course, if you have no breath, you're dead. So please don't practice that. No breathing means, uh, or no breath means, and no one is breathing. No one is breathing. Breathing continues. The body is here. But there is no doing whatsoever. We can't find any doer in the mind body. The breathing just happens. So it's directly being, it's, this is like directly living your life. Mm, this doesn't happen to us very often in daily life, uh, but it can happen often in something like key breathing. Uh, and once it begins to happen to you, this musoku, uh, then it becomes more familiar. I mean to say this way of living, this way of being, this way of seeing the world and interacting with the world as if you are being lived by the universe, by the universe. This is what Toy Sensei is teaching us. Okay, so uh, that's my what I have to say right now. Uh, you have question or comment, please uh, make, unmute your uh, mute button, I guess, and raise your hand and I'll call on you.
I can only see, uh, I only have, oh wait, what's this? Oh, so I can go on and on and see. Okay, so there is a room for all of you on here. So maybe uh, just take a shot at it, unmute and start speaking. I think you'll come on to everybody. Uh, uh, let, let, um, and if this is too difficult, you know what that means. I'm going to call on you. So, Charles Boyer, please unmute and come speak to us. Hello, hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, and, but, but I can't see you, so also uh, uh, turn on your video. Oh, that's Celine. Hi, Celine. Hi, Sensei. How are you doing? Does that mean that uh, Carlos is passing the buck to you? No, I I'm on my iPad. I'm on my iPad. He's sitting there over he there. There he is. No, head. Sensei. <laughs> He's on the screen now. You are on the screen now. Charles is down there too. Okay. I have to find. Hi, Sensei. Hi, Charles. Carlos. Oh, there you are. Oh, there. Now you're here. Thank you. Oh, you have, uh, I see. Okay. So this is for all of us. We've never done this before. Um, and so I think it's fun. Uh, but I'll tell you before you start, I know you have something to say. But it, uh, the one thing that's different that I notice uh, is the, the, uh, presence when i'm in front of when you're sitting in front of me when i'm sitting in front of you like this like this together it's a different feeling than when i'm looking at your picture on the video even though i see that it's you i can hear that it's you everything is correct it's you but it's a different feeling interesting i think we can survive Please speak up. I can tell you that I love key breathing and I struggle with it. And I love it. Why do you, what is that? What is the struggle? What is the struggle? Yes. Are you? My body, I struggle with my body. You do like breathing, but you struggle with it. What is the struggle? Why do you struggle with it? I struggle with my body. You mean sitting still? No. Oh, what is it? My body just sometimes doesn't cooperate, Sensei. In what way? That's difficult to say. Sometimes my back hurts. Sometimes I I feel like I I cannot fill up from head to toe. Oh, this isn't every time. This is occasionally. So there's tension. There's tension. That's right, Sensei. So the tension causes discomfort, uh, nervousness, or uh, uneasiness, movement and in parts of your body and insufficient breathing. And it's like a, a domino effect. It, it builds. Yeah. If it starts that way, it, it sometimes gets worse. Maybe all of you have this experience also once in a while while you're breathing. And again, it's, it's a... a it's kind of a feedback mechanism. In other words, the less calm we are, we're breathing to experience calmness. And yet, if we're not calm, if we have tension in our body, we can't breathe to experience calmness. <laughs> so uh, the answer uh, is not blowing in the wind. <laughs> the answer is, of course, practice, practice, practice. So uh, of course, in the beginning, Many, many years ago, 
uh, when, when Suzuki Sensei told me, oh, you want to be like this, you breathe one hour every day from now on. And there's no way. There's no way I could do that because I had way too much tension in my body. So it took years for me to learn to sit uh, for an hour and then I was breathing incorrectly. It took many more years. It was 20, 25, 30 years before I was really exhaling gradually with ease, <laughs> really enjoying the breathing. But of course, like everything else in the beginning, we have to have discipline. We, we just, we, if, even if it's not doing, going well, we breathe. Now, if we do that, if we use our life that way, if we use our time that way, at some point, we, uh, something happens and we fall in love with what's actually good for us instead of just loving the things that aren't so good for us. That's the best thing we can do is fall in love with breathing. And it's not just breathing. I mean, you like breathing already. It's falling in love with this process of sitting deeply at ease. And instead of the breathing inhibiting that ease, the breathing serves like a, a repeating engine in the universe to stroke us and take us deeper and deeper and deeper into this sense of great sense of ease and ultimate satisfaction, as Toy Sensei called the supreme ecstasy. That sounds so far away, but it's not. It's right here. <laughs> okay, someone else, please. Someone who would like to say something else, just click your mic on and. Come on. Hi, Sensei. This is Udo. Hi. Okay, here he is, Udo. Hi. Hi. Oh, you have a gi on. Look. Oh. Wow. Well. <laughs> I don't have my gi on. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. I wanted to ask you if you could elaborate about the shift from universal breathing to musok. What? What do you feel in this moment? What do you feel? How, how do you notice? Well, I think that, okay, that's a really good question. Um, when, I can only speak from my own experience, when I'm, when I'm doing universal breathing, um, I have a very distinct sense of myself in this locale in relation to the inclusive universe and in relation to this infinitely small center of that universe. Just like when I'm doing Kakudai or Chuchu or the same feeling, but, but there's a distinct sense of me seeing this happening, me being the originator of it happening. This, of course, is, is you might say, uh, more advanced than doing whole body breathing, but you're still as dumb as a rock because I'm still, I'm still wrapped up in me. It's still, still as narcissistic as can be. Of course, we're all narcissists. So. We do this kind of exercise to help us notice, notice that. And so as I'm sitting in, in this ease, breathing in and breathing out, what happens is, and it doesn't happen all the time, but when it, and it doesn't happen because of anything I do, I've tried, there is nothing I can do to make that happen. But it just happens and I will say that there's a deep calmness that will always be there or it doesn't happen. And, and there's just uh, that sense of me in the middle of everything, this me, this meanness, this Chris Curtisness, 
uh, it's not gone, it's just dispersed to everywhere. There's just, there's no, uh, there's still a center of a one point and there's still an infinite uh, sphere, uh, an infinity, an, 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 an inclusiveness. But there isn't any feeling of separation from it. And when I'm doing uh, universal breathing, there still is a sense of separation. It's a sense of wonder that I feel when that happens. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, um, it's not emotional like this when it happens, but when I think of it, when I think of it, it makes me cry because it's so beautiful. Not, it's so beautiful not being full of myself, I guess is what I mean. Which, which means that I must be full of myself a lot, which maybe everybody knows already. Uh, so this kind of practice, I mean, can you imagine, I can't imagine not having this kind of practice, uh, not having this kind of experience. So I'm, I'm really glad you asked me that. People don't usually ask me that. Thank you, man. Afraid what I might say, but you're very courageous. <laughs> okay, please excuse me. Uh, someone else, please. Hello, uh, Sensei. It's Vernon Liu. Ah, uh, Vernon Liu. Okay, I'm going back to Vernon. A long time. Um, sleeping with key breathing. How I try to control, but. Uh, continues uh, early on, late in the 70s when I first started, or even the 80s. Um, but um, I found that to have deep breathing for more body. But um, eventually, I fall asleep doing the key breathing. Oh, good. That's OK. It's OK. Yeah. Did you want to stay awake? <laughs> stay awake. <laughs> Try to stay awake, but to continue the breathe, breathing, but it, well, concentrating on the. I, I think you must mean um, that you're late in the evening. Yes. Well, that very likely. Uh, I, the reason I do breathing first thing in the morning is because I never fall asleep. When I do a, either meditation or breathing, after eight o'clock at night, I just go right to sleep. It's, it's wonderful, but it's not, not very, uh, I don't get to continue doing that exercise. That's why I always recommend doing it in the morning because I think it's, well, the older you get, the more natural it is to just fall asleep when you're comfortable. Don't you think so? Yes. You're not so old, but you're getting there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You you have watched me struggle with key breathing for years, and you know I have a particular limitation in my lungs because I've had surgery, and when I do key breathing, it really lights up the pain in my lungs, and I I've never managed to relax my lungs. Can I, can so, I... yeah, you know I've had a few moments when you've guided me, and I've breathed with ease but when i'm trying to do it it's like i always hit this pain so uh, this is what you always tell me yep ask you about your breathing you tell me about your lungs and i i believe you i understand um but i have also experienced with you as you say times when you actually love doing the breathing <laughs> and those lungs are not bothering you at all and uh, you want to know what the big difference is between those two times? Um, it, well, it would be easy to say in one occasion you're struggling and one you're not. That's true. But you have the habit in you of uh, moving a lot when you're breathing. Mm. And a kind of a struggling harshness 
in your body, even to the point, I don't know if you can see me, but mm -hmm. when you push down on your legs sitting, sitting mm. your shoulders come up. And it looks incredibly uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I, I, I always feel like I, I just want to, <laughs> you know, like hold you and, and, and let's just do this together. And then, of course, you, 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 you can do it very well. But, but, and then you do it, and then I think, okay, he's got it now. But then, yeah. the time you come to class, or I see you breathing, you, yeah. you've reverted to that. Uh, so it's a deep uh, a thing, and I think that it, it, it's, it's, it's almost like you're convinced that it's, it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be damaging to your lungs. And in fact, uh, it can be, and it proves to be uh, exactly as you suspected it would be. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if I'm with you, you trust me enough that we can do this together, and, and then it's a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. yep. We should breathe together more often, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I could come all the time. <laughs> there are there is a question here sensei in the book key in daily life is a photo with a horizontal line it goes from the nose their nose through the back of their head and out is this depicting the nose tip breath inhalation okay so i have two things to say about that yeah okay you do the breathe from the tip of your nose and it comes in and goes down uh, your spine to your one point. So if you're looking for a direction, that's how that goes. Number one. Number two, I was training with Koichi uh, Joe Sensei uh, in the Tenshin Gosho, uh, which is the key meditation room at headquarters, about 20 years ago. 25 years old, and I ask him something like that from his book, from his key breathing book. And he said, oh, Mr. Curtis, don't read that book. That's all wrong. I, that was a lot, I've changed since then. That's the trouble with writing books. It doesn't let you change. So he said, listen to me now. Now I'm telling you about key breathing. And I have to say that, uh, it's quite different than what is written in the early books. And many years later, he was still changing. And I was with Shinichi Doi Sensei in uh, Oregon in the early 2000s. And he was giving a talk, an informal talk. And he said, I want to say that Koichi Tohei Sensei's principles will never change. They will always be the same and always be honored in key society teaching. But the method of teaching, the method of passing on these principles, the examples we use, the exercises we do, the way that we interact with the students will change so radically as to make key society at some point unrecognizable from the old. But that's important uh, to remember for all of you. Maybe, I mean, I've already experienced this myself in my own training, and you've probably known most of you and me long enough to see me change in this way too. And then I'm gonna leave well, at some point, and then you will go on changing and developing the way that you the way that you share this with, with other people, as you develop and your experience of this, uh, of, of taiga or of universality deepens so that you're practicing shugyo all the time instead of just keiko, then being with you will change. It will change. And of course, your delight in all of it will also change. Okay. All right, someone else, we have uh, 10 more minutes. 
Can you ask, can someone else ask a question, please? Someone from Europe, maybe. Ah, Christoph. Yes. Um, I, 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 I have a, a simple question. Um, about the second principle, uh, exile with the smallest sound possible. I have the impression uh, uh, the fact that uh, we all uh, have been practicing with uh, with uh, with uh, differently in, in 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 the sense that we we all been practicing making noise as to do with something else than the problem of translation. Because personally, I started uh, this practice in Japan from a Japanese sensei. And uh, the Japanese sensei uh, taught me uh, uh, to, to, to exhale uh, with noise. So, yeah. so, so yeah. the Japanese sensei uh, was, was, uh, was probably basing his, his, uh, his uh, teaching from, from, from the Japanese version of, uh, of, of uh, Toei sensei's principles. You, you see what I mean? Yeah, but that's what it says in Japanese. Okay. So well, it, it, what, what, what I mean, maybe I, I was not clear. What I mean is uh, the way I, I, I was taught originally was from a Japanese sensei was, please do it with noise, not, not with the smallest uh, sound possible. Okay, is, say that Koichi Tohei taught me key breathing. He's Japanese, in fact, he's the guy that wrote that. And he taught yeah. with noise, with a noisy, uh, okay? So that's how we did it then. Uh -huh. so, the, so, so it's, it's more than translation than um, the, the change. Toy Sensei wrote that like over 50 years ago, but he uh -huh. did not follow that. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, okay. That's mm -hmm. not the only thing that he wrote that he did not follow until he became late, until later. Like in the 90s, he was teaching key breathing like this, like he wrote. You know, and if you recall, we used to do Sokshin and Gyo very differently too. And later, uh, and even Shinichi Sensei is teaching us more and more a different method of doing this. It's supposed to be for relaxation, you know, but we used to do it for power <laughs> and tension. And in fact, everything we did after World War II came out like that. So maybe it was just a, an overweening, uh, self-consciousness about power that prevented us from even the author of this from teaching this to his sincere student who wanted to learn and Oba Sensei I know him well and and you know well I mean my teacher that I love dearly Suzuki Sensei used to make a, a howling noise when he was breathing out and and there, and also, by the way, folks, there used to be a lot more movement involved. So there was a lot of movement with my head and my upper body. And um, now I almost don't move at all. And I don't. I don't ask students to. To move. Whatever makes you comfortable, but. It doesn't need to be there hardly at all. It's only a natural, it's like when you're sitting in meditation. You don't want to have, you don't want to tell yourself, oh, I'm in meditation, I must not move. Because that's not natural. Even when you're sitting still, there's movement. I, right now, there's movement in my body. It's very subtle, but there is some movement. And when you're breathing out, there's a certain kind of movement. And breathing in, there's a certain kind of movement because there's a rhythm excuse me, that is in us. So we're, we're coming to the end of our time here now. And uh, I, I thank you very much for coming together with me and doing this. I hope it hasn't been too distracting. Uh, at least we've had a chance to see each other and to uh, uh, interact together a little bit. And during a time like this, which is a very very unique and unusual, requiring us all to, to, to pretty much stay home most of the time. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me.
and I am going to end the meeting now. And uh, I, I have to say goodbye to everyone. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you.